People believe that if you brought everlasting trees into your house, that maybe it was a sign of saying, not everything dies. However, it is rather morbid that we do cut down Christmas trees every single year. Hey, Gala fam, it's Rachel. And Rhea. And we're the Gala sisters. We're actually Irish twins. Yeah, which means we're 15 months apart or less. So, everybody, Merry Christmas Eve it is the second to last video that you guys are going to get from us this year. Um, but that does not mean that we are not going to have a good time. Tonight, we or tonight, today we are going to do something a little bit different. We're going to tell you guys a story, and it's actually a culmination of a lot of stories, a lot of like visions and historicalness, because this channel is run by people who are fascinated by history. Oh yes, we love it. History is one of our favorite things. Our father has a degree in ancient history, and we grew up listening to stories of old. Mm-hmm. So... Make sure that you are following us on the social media scrolling below. As well as linked in the description box down below. We also have a website that we built ourselves at www.thegalasisters.com with three different blogs. And it would just make our Christmas if you would hit the subscribe button. So with that, we'll take a look at the history of Santa Claus. So let's preface this by saying... You know, we celebrate Christmas even though we are not of an Abraham religion. No. But we still love the fairy tales in the Bible, and we love the history of St. Nicholas. Well, this is going to be kind of like a multifaceted story. It's not mm -hmm. just going to be one part. I mean, obviously, we're going to talk a little bit about the history of Santa. Would you like to start us off? So, Santa Claus was actually a real person. I believe he lived in Turkey. Mm -hmm. So St. Nicholas was his name. And St. Nicholas was a wonderful person. He is one of the actual saints who really earned his name for doing good deeds. Now, what good deeds did he do? Well, he was left wealth. He, he inherited wealth. And he set out to change the world and to spread the wealth around, which is what we do on Christmas generally. Traditionally, it's a time of giving. Even if it's not of money, it's giving whatever you have, your time, your love, your energy, to whoever you may find in need. Now, one of the most famous things that St. Nicholas did was he heard of these three daughters and their father was very poor and could not afford a dowry for them. Back in the day, for you youngsters, you could not marry anyone of any wealth or status unless you came with a familial gift. Now, that could be farm animals, money, um, land, or whatever you might have. It didn't just need to be money. So, this father was trying to figure out what to do with his daughters. And he had no dowry, so he was going to sell them, probably into slavery. And St. Nicholas heard of this, and he would have none of it. So he offered to pay their dowry. And the father said, no, I cannot accept charity. So St. Nicholas snuck in one night, and he threw three bags of money and probably jewels and gems and stuff like that into their home and when they woke up they found these gifts under the Christmas tree essentially and they were able to find wealthy husbands who treated them well and thus began the story of St. Nicholas. Now Christmas trees that come from the pagan holiday Saturnalia. Saturnalia is celebrated on the winter solstice, 
which is the longest night of the year. People believe that if you brought everlasting trees into your house, that maybe it was a sign of saying, not everything dies. However, it is rather morbid that we do cut down Christmas trees every single year. Now, the story of the Bible, the birth date of Jesus probably wasn't December 25th. Mm -mm. It probably was in the summer. So traditionally, to celebrate St. Nicholas, you actually don't use the tree. I know that's kind of, we've incorporated it all and meshed it all together because we're, you know, Americans, that's what we do. We're melting pot. Yep. Yeah. But if you would like to just celebrate St. Nicholas, he died on December 6th. Sorry, I don't know what year. And the night before, a lot of people will leave out shoes outside their door. And St. Nicholas will come by and fill your shoes with gifts. So do you see where he comes from? I think it makes plain sense to me. In 1882, the poem, A Visit from St. Nick, a.k.a. The Night Before Christmas, was commissioned. From there, we get the description of the modern-day Santa. They actually explain what he looks like. And that was really the first time that anybody wrote down what they believed Santa looked like. In 1931, Coca-Cola commissioned illustrator Haddon Sunbloom to paint Santa for Christmas advertisements to show what he looked like. Now, I have been to World of Coke, and I can tell you that there is a beautiful couch that has this entire story on the very top of it. Unfortunately, I don't have the pictures anymore because they belong to my ex-husband. And from there, Santa Coke and the Coca-Cola Bears were born. No, Coca-Cola did not create Santa. But he commissioned. But they commissioned the, the first limit, the first photograph of him depicted from a visit from Saint Nick. Mm -hmm. And when we were young, we all had giant Coca Cola bears. I have one somewhere from World of Coke, but I don't mm -hmm. know where it is. I don't have the one from when I was a child anymore, unfortunately. So we sit for a while, and then in 1897, an editorial was written called "Yes, Virginia, There Really Is a Santa Claus." So, eight-year-old Virginia O'Hanlon wrote a letter to the New York Sun. Francis Farcellus Church responded. So, her letter said, Dear Editor, I am eight years old. Some of my little friends say there is no Santa Claus. Papa says if you see it in the sun, it's so. Please tell me the truth. Is there a Santa Claus? Virginia O'Hanlon, 115 West 95th Street. Virginia. Your little friends are wrong. They have been affected by the skepticism of a skeptical age, which we still live in. <laughs> they do not believe, except, except they see. They think that nothing can be which is not comprehensible by their little minds. All minds, Virginia, whether they be men's or children's, are little. In this great universe of ours, man is a mere insect, an ant in his intellect, as compared to the boundless world about him, as measured by intelligence, capable of grasping the whole of truth and knowledge. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. He exists as certainly as love and generosity and devotion exist. And you know that they abound and give to your life its highest beauty and joy. Alas! How dreary would be the world if there were no Santa Claus. It would be as dreary as if there were no Virginias. There would be no childlike faith and no poetry, no romance to make tolerable this existence. We should have no enjoyment except in sense and sight. The eternal light with which childhood fills the world would be extinguished. No, not believe in Santa Claus. You might as well not believe in fairies. You might get your papa to hire men to watch in all the chimneys on Christmas Eve to catch Santa Claus, but even if they did not see Santa Claus coming down, what would that prove? Nobody sees Santa Claus, but that is no sign that there is no Santa Claus. The most real things in the world are those that neither children nor men can see. Did you ever see fairies dancing on the lawn? Of course not, but that's not proof that they are not there. Nobody can conceive or imagine all the wonders that are unseen and unseeable in the world. You may tear apart the baby's rattle and see what makes a noise inside. But there is a veil covering the unseen world, which not the strongest man, nor even the united strength of all the strongest men that ever lived could tear apart. Only faith, fancy, poetry, love, romance can push aside that curtain and view and picture the supernatural 
So, yeah, beauty and glory beyond. Is it real? Ah, Virginia. In all this world, there's nothing else real and abiding. No Santa Claus. Thank God he lives. And he lives forever a thousand years from now. Virginia, nay, ten times, ten thousand years from now, he will continue to make glad the heart of childhood. So the idea behind Santa Claus is that despite the fact that us parents and caregivers give presents in the name of our children to our children, does not necessarily mean that this magical thing does not exist. Look around in your life, wherever you see love, respect, understanding, miracles that's where santa lies and in this season we often all feel grief and sorrow because there are empty chairs at our tables for people and animals and loved ones gone that we so desperately wish could be with us and partaking in our holiday festivity festivities but just remember that as good old St. Nick still lives today through each and every single one of us, so do our loved ones long gone. They're not really gone. They are still here. And we have to carry on the traditions of our ancestors and good old St. Nick is a reminder that this is possible. And don't ever let your childlike wonder die. Approach the world with big, wide open, bushy eyes. Why do the first 20 years of life have to be more exciting than the last 20 years of life? Why can't they all be wonderful and treat each one as if you have another thousand years to live? We have to remember that love is the love and truth are not that different. Love and truth come to all of us. When you see someone hurting, Reach out a hand to that person because you never know. You may make a friend. Instead of hurting each other, let's for one day come together. Hold on. Sorry, I'm crying. Let's for one day come together and be as one. Let's not sit there and let's not hate each other. Someone does have something you don't have. Oh, well. Someone's friends with someone you're not. Oh, well. Don't push each other down, hold each other back up again. Life is but a fleeting moment on this planet, and it's better to love than to hate. Are hate and love the opposite? No, absolutely not. Hate and love are pretty much actually the same thing, but love is more magical than hate. Lies get you nowhere, and love gets you everywhere. Friendship gets you everywhere. Coldness gets you nowhere. For once, let's put our differences aside and build each other up. Remember, at the beginning of the pandemic, when we saw our fellow man sleeping under a bridge, we saw that single mom down the street who couldn't afford presents, who was struggling to pay her rent, and we offered them a helping hand. But now that we are used to the pandemic and have a vaccine that most can take, some cannot, we have forgotten to be charitable and to be loving and that it is incomprehensible for anyone to have to live in poverty. It is wrong and when you sit there at your feast and your neighbor down the street has a can of beans, I hope that you look in the mirror and you send that person perhaps a meal. We've all forgotten what Christmas is supposed to be about. So often I hear people say things like, Christmas is about wanting. No, it's not. Christmas is about love. Christmas is about loving one another. Christmas is about what the Christmas, a Christmas Carol really is about. The story where, you know, the disabled child knows more than the old crouchy man. That's true in real life too, you know. You guys, we are not smarter than you. We simply know how to put our thoughts into words and actions. And St. Nick, I know that you are not here today, but your spirit lives on. And I hope that your spirit can live on through me. And while I may not be a religious person, I do believe that 
these people in these books are real and that there is something to be learned from our history. And I hope that you all can enjoy the meaning of Christmas. And the meaning of Christmas is not about me, 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 or being selfish, or what I want. It is about giving. It is about making the world a better place for other people. And in doing so, you will inevitably make it better for yourself. You see someone hurting, you offer your friendship. You see someone broken, you try to figure out how to fix them. We cannot fix every single person, but we can't fix one person. And one person is all it ever takes. Charity. What does charity represent? Probably a place where you need help. If you need help paying bills, ask and you shall receive. So many people think that we made this YouTube channel for ourselves. The farthest thing could be from the truth. We made this YouTube channel to help others. Not everyone. Because you should only help those who are kind to you. That's what we believe. And we made this channel and we help people that we see who are denied due process. Especially in the court of public opinion. And that is our gift to you and to the world that if you have been in a situation where you are being robbed of your due process, let us know. We will try to help as much as we can. We're only two people. We're only, we're very small girls, but size doesn't really matter. Because remember, the size of a heart is not judged by how much you love, but by how much you are loved in return. Which means that anyone who is as amazing as so many people in this world must have huge hearts. We understand life in a different way because we live a very different type of lifestyle. We are your friendly neighborhood, asexual lesbians, caregivers of a disabled child, disabled ourselves, chronically ill, and yet look at all we can do. Because people who end up giving the most are the ones who have nothing to give. Because we know, we remember what it's like to suffer. And we don't want anyone else to experience what we've gone through. We well, hope that you found some solace in this channel in the last year. We will be here again next year to hold your hand. But that does not mean that you can treat us however you want. No, you have to be nice. Being nice and being kind is something that the two of us haven't really experienced too much. Both of us survivors of best violence. Probably because of our sexuality, more than likely. We've been robbed of many opportunities in similar ways to the Cuomo's. You can see we've shared a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And you guys are so busy wanting to make sure that the Cuomo's are okay. How about you check on your neighbors instead? Your children. Your loved ones. Go adopt an animal. Yeah. And take good care of it and love it and bring that old animal to old age. We've done it with two. And it hurts, but we do it because these animals deserve homes. Loving homes where they can enjoy their lives. You guys, you have to remember that this is a time of giving. A time of giving. A time of love. Do not be the previous before he met the three girls Scrooge. Be the Scrooge after that. It's as if without the former guy, 45 Trump, around to remind you what true evil is, you have become complacent. Don't get upset that you don't get everything you want exactly when you want it, exactly how you want it. That is not real life. In fact, that is something that sociopaths do. They want something right now, exactly when they say it. It is a psychological fact. Go to school and you will learn this. But delayed gratification is not always a bad thing. And in this coming year, we're going to make this coming year as good as we can. 
comparing everything that we have been through for the last two years now. A pandemic, a governor wrongfully removed, a news anchor wrongfully removed and treated like garbage, cast aside like he doesn't matter. Our lives and our freedom stolen from us by COVID. But in the midst of all of it, the wise person is the one who remembers that somewhere the light is, the light is shining. I just don't know where that is. Look for the good in mankind. Don't look for the bad. Be glad that you are still here. Be glad that life has a funny way of working out. Things could be a lot worse. Always remember that. And always be thankful. Because that is what the season, that is what Santa represents. Santa Claus represents the good in mankind, not the evil. Mm -hmm. And remember to also be like Santa Claus, that if someone has been bad, perhaps don't give them a present. Maybe not. That's up to you to decide. Mm -hmm. We have a naughty list. Mm -hmm. We do. <laughs> don't troll us. That's not worth it. Mm -hmm. We don't sit down and do these sit down videos very often because they make us cry. They do. <laughs> and we like our makeup. And let's just say the Gala household is going through things that they will never that they will never share on this channel. No. Because that's none of your business. When you see someone online, that's all you see. You see the mo you see the blip in time. You don't see everything. There are things that we choose to keep off this channel. And if we don't want to talk about something, please don't make us. Mm -hmm. So guys, I hope this video um, has been informative in some way to someone. And from our house to yours, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And a very happy new year. And happy holidays. If you don't celebrate Christmas for some reason. So guys, we are gonna end the video here. But I hope that you guys will keep the spirit of Christmas alive throughout all 100, 165, 365 days of the year, because this is what this is all about. So guys, we are going to leave you, but we do hope that you enjoy this video and you can do show us you liked it by giving it a thumbs up. Smash that subscribe button down below. Guys, we seem to be at this weird standstill where we seem to be at like, somewhere between like one, like 880 and 878. Something like that. I don't know what's going on. YouTube is being really weird. It's not just our channel that's affected. There's so many of us that yeah. are affected by it. Give that bell a big ring so that you don't miss moments of when we um, go live or we post videos. We are going to finish Vlogmas. And then we are, 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 are going to finish Vlogmas and then we are going to take a much needed break. And you will see us again on January 10th. And our upload schedule is going to change. But also remember that we're going to go live on Sunday night. And we're going to have a call-in show. And if you are going to call in and be rude, just don't bother to. We're going to hang up on you. Because we just don't care. And we have other things that we would like to do. And make sure that you also go check out our merch. Merch makes a really great gift if someone watches our channel and you know they love it. And also, remember, this is a two-woman team. It will always, forever, only be ran by the two of us. We're co-CEOs, we're co-owners. We will never invite anyone else to do exactly what we do. We edit everything ourselves. We don't pay anyone to help. We work very, very hard. We are exhausted because we work so hard, but we love every second of it. And it's been fun getting to know you and to just kind of explore the world in a different way. So thank you so much for joining us. We will see you again one last time tomorrow for this year. And love and share. Bye! Bye.